In this episode of Somebody Somewhere, I head to Cape Town, South Africa with Sneaker Wolf and the Losers crew from Japan. Buddy, what? A little football, a little soccer. All of you have Stony. How come I don't have one Stony? Y'all are very selfish. We happen to catch the transition of summer to winter, so the weather was kind of all over the place. Even with the crazy weather, this was one of the most beautiful places I've seen with my own eyes. So without further ado, welcome to Cape Town. First thing we did upon arrival was mad dash for the closest pub and ended up at a barbecue spot called Lefties. Can I get a Thunder Puff logo? Yeah, cheese <laughs> waffles. Thank you. Oh, yeah. There's no beets in Japan. <laughs> Tina and I have become good friends over the years, but this was my first time hanging out with Sneaker Wolf. Cape Town, I didn't know anything about Cape Town. I didn't know anything about Cape Town. I just came and saw it. We link up with Brad, who's super dialed into sneaker culture and has been a fan of Sneaker Wolf for a while. I learned about Sneaker Wolf because of the collaborations that he had done. Through that, I got exposed to uh, his other sort of work, which is his windows he would do and a lot of sort of hand-painted stuff. And I liked the fact that a lot of what he did was very traditional. You know, and like at the core of design, so to speak. I saw a silhouette of, was the shock, shock 2.0 with the little, you know, the teeth on the side, the camo one. I was like, I was just really interested in the shoe because it was so different and it was so different, but yet so familiar, you know, because you see so many like classic silhouettes in it. And then when I saw the name, I was like, fuck, it's called Losers, that's amazing. And I must admit, when I met him for the first time, I was a little bit like starstruck, I suppose. And to make it even worse, he doesn't speak a word of English, so it was kind of just this like stare and nods, lots of nods and highs and nods. Uh, no problem. <laughs> One of the most important ingredients of travel is getting to know the locals' perspective, which most often includes food. Two favorites in Cape Town are A, a curry-filled Wonder Bread vessel called Bunny Chow. Bunny Chow, damn. You just kind of get in there and take a bit of bread and some sauce and some meat and you just shovel it down. And B, a sandwich the size of a small baby, best served in the company of friends. Gatsby. Show it to me, show me your Gatsby. Yeah, dude. You know, it's all about different food in different places, man. <laughs> you can't get more Cape Town ghetto than this shit, dude. I loved watching you guys eat a Gatsby because it's something for me that is so Cape Town. But at the same time, everyone loves sandwiches. You know, it's, like, um, it's like video games for me. It's amazing. It's, it's something that no matter what language you speak, no matter where you live, there can be cultural barriers, there can be language barriers, but it's something that kind of like everyone can identify with. It just brings you down to this like human level. And you're like, okay. Everyone's gonna be full, you're gonna feel like sleeping, and you're all gonna be covered in shit. Aftermath. Oh, I'm in no state to talk right now, actually. Wiped out by the Gatsby. I stopped yeah, I'll let you know. Thank you, brother. No sleep after Gatsby? Do not sleep after Gatsby. You will fuck your shit up. <laughs> DJ Sneaker Wolf. <laughs> Since when did he become a DJ? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that Sneaker Wolf's name comes from his two favorite things. Peanut butter wolf and sneakers. Do tell. Do tell. Oh, uh... <laughs> Cape Town's big, but the city center, so to speak, is very tiny. And, and people are just like, everyone knows everyone type thing, you know? <laughs> Yeah, we have the beer pot. Beer pot. How much? Hey, Tian. How's yeah. it going, bud? <laughs> it's cold, buddy. It's actually kind of 
thermal underwear cold. Well, we're blowing it on that tip, yeah. so. He blew it completely on that. I'll do what you say. Well, and now you know. Nice. I'll give you I'm holding. Video. 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 More we can get rough. That's how it's beautiful. Yeah, that's how it's beautiful. Today, we go to the top of Table Mountain. The mountain that most people know is Table Mountain, you know, the sort of iconic silhouette. Then it's also, it's kind of made up of a whole system of mountains, which sort of goes all the way around the East Coast. Before our adventure down to the most southwest tip of Africa, we're headed back to our favorite breakfast spot in town, Clark's. Well, don't try to change it if it ain't broke, you know? The breakfast is just always on point, and that's why we just keep going back over and over and over again. It's just such a chill, relaxed atmosphere, you know. Uh, it's exactly what you want for breakfast. It's Mother Nature screaming at you. The back of Clark's has got a space called the pit. It's sort of like an underground garage that was part of the whole place, which they kind of just turned into like a clubhouse. It's got like a nice four sheet wide mini ramp with uh, what they, what's called your mom's bowl, which is a concrete bowl. And kind of that's where everyone just goes and hangs out, skates and smokes cigarettes and plays music really loudly and drinks loads of beer. それこそ地平線が丸く見えるような海もあったりとかっていうその。コントラストがすごく。あの、印象的な街だと思います。えっと、最初にえっと海とえっと水着座の山が。Welcome to the Cape of Storms. I'm standing this side of the mountain. Got a nice view of the Twelve Apostles, all the way around to the cable car and lions here down that side. Welcome to Cape Town. Oh, rain! Fuck. It's starting to rain. It's starting to rain, oh. buddy. That's what Cape Town's all about. Cape Town just turned on us. Nice and safe. It's subject to just change on you in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Love that uh, shimmering action. Ooh. Fucking amazing. So what's the lowdown about this spot? Like, is there a history to it? Fish on the Rocks is just probably one of the more sort of infamous fish and chip shops around. And it's it's old school. It's an old school fish and chip shop. Yeah. In the middle of Heart Bay Harbor, one of the most well-known spots for snook, which is one of the things we eat with chips. Snook and tips, bro. What are you drinking, Chris? Stony. I think America just got on the ginger beer tip. It takes a real man to drink that warm. Leave a can in your car for a day, and then drink that. I guarantee you, you wouldn't get through a quarter of it. Stone. The fish is fogging up my lens. Oh man, it's so hot. Yeah, dude. This is why they call it fish on the rocks. I never thought I'd fall. <laughs> <laughs> so we're about to 
introduce you to our program center. Yeah, it's a thing. You can see this. What? Take it for a wee bit of a whiz. When you kind of like remind yourself about the exquisite beauty around you constantly is firstly when other people sort of point it out to you uh, or you have to show people around. That's definitely the first time where you go, oh, shit, you know, it's, it is actually quite nice, you know. And the second time is the moment you leave. The moment you're somewhere else for like more than a week, it's weird, you get like separation anxiety. Need my mountain. <laughs> people are constantly climbing it and hiking, and people run through the mountains with their dogs. And, and it's just it's just part of the city, you know. I left that run. Just kicking around the football. 今日は最終日ということなので、南アフリカスタイルのバーベキューをやってくれるということです。Now we have to have a prime. Show these cats how we do it in South Africa. You can't come to South Africa and not have a braai, as everyone else says, barbecue. It was nice to just sit down and to have a send off that was so cozy and, and homely. You know, it felt like, although we had only kind of been around each other for a few days, it felt like we had known each other for a lifetime. Party is in the house. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll miss you too, Mr. Christopher Laughter. We drank some beers and we spoke some shit and we all went into a food coma and we went to sleep. And it was great. No one felt uh, like they needed to stay afterwards, which to me made us feel like we were family. We were like, right, thanks for the food. I'm tired. Good night. <laughs> it's time to go. I think that's the nice thing about Cape Town is that people are always pleasantly surprised. I find that there's no point in trying to go, this is a great place, you should come. It's like, look, it really is a cool place. Just give it a go. You know? and, I, and I think that's the nice thing that still exists is that you will have an opportunity to be truly surprised. South Africa, everyone, thank you very much.